Welcome back. This is the final video in the QSQL module, and we're going to look at updating our data next. So quite often you might need to update your data because you would have, for example, bad source data coming in um, and you might want to change those results. So if we take a look at our max passengers by vendor, we can see an example of this. So I'm seeing for my three different vendors, I get max passengers of five, six and 113. Um, so now this 113 could be a crazy party bus maybe, um, but let's assume for the purposes of this exercise, it's not, it's just an erroneous entry and we're going to update that. So we're going to say this is wrong and we're anywhere where passengers is greater than five, we want to replace that um, passenger count with five. So first of all, if I want to um, <clears throat> return all of the records where the number of passengers is greater than five, I can just run my select statement from before. And if I run a count in front of that, I can see the data set has reduced. So I'm now no longer getting, you can see I'm, I'm only getting the passengers that are greater than five. So if we want to update those, we can actually run update on that. So the where clause is exactly the same. And I'm just doing an update of passengers to be five in place of um, where I had my select statement before. So if I count that as well, before I reassign Jan09 to be this value, I can see that my result set is actually the same. So I, I haven't reduced the size of the data set like I did when I counted um, my select statement. All I've done is just updated any rows where passengers was greater than five um, to be five. And I'm just going to prove that now by doing a, another select max passengers by vendor from Jan09. So you can see now I've capped the result at five. Um, this here bit was important to in order to persist that result. Um, if I didn't have that, I would have just gone back to my table as it was before. So that's updating an existing column. We can also add on um, columns that we don't have in the table by using update. So in this example here, I'm creating a new column called weighted average fare and I'm using the weighted average function. So that's another new keyword we haven't seen yet. We can pop over to our keywords and go to weighted average here to go find out some more examples on that and the syntax, etc. cetera. Um, but it basically allows us to calculate the weighted average fare by passengers. And um, I'm gonna add on that column. And because I'm doing the reassignment here, when I run meta on Jan09 afterwards, you'll see I now have a new additional column that I didn't have before added onto my table. And then finally, we're going to just look at the delete command. We did actually see this in the previous video. I showed how you can delete a column from a table, just running delete column name from table name. Um, we can also delete rows from the table. So instead of having the columns, I'm passing in my where clause. So I'm saying delete from Jan and then where duration equals zero because a taxi ride of a duration of zero doesn't really make sense. So I'm going to say they're also erroneous um, results. So if I count my Jan09 table, before and after the delete. And you can see I'm reassigning here to be Jan09, um, to overwrite Jan09. You'll see the number of records decreases slightly, which is what we'd expect. Um, just one last thing to note, I'm unable to run um, both deleting of rows and columns in the same statement. So for example, if I try and run delete vendor from Jan09, that's okay. But if I try and add um, the where clause as well and delete those rows, um, we get this NYI error, which stands for not yet implemented, which means uh, we understand what you're doing makes sense, but we, we don't have it implemented yet. So if you wanted to do that, you just need to break it up into two separate steps to do one or the other first, and then move on and do the second one. Okay, um, so the last section in the notebook is temporal arithmetic. And when we say temporal, we just mean anything to do with time. Um, so in Q, if we go to our data types, you can see we've got a lot of different um, time related data types here. So from 12 down to 19, they're all to do with time. So we've got timestamp, month, date, etc. And you can see here the the timestamp one is actually a combination of two other um, time related data types being date and time span, which is time spans down here. And you can see it's just separated by a capital D. Um, and we also have things like minutes, seconds and, and time here. So lots of different um, time related data types, which is really useful when you're doing time series analysis, which is what KDB is really, really good at. Um, so I'm going to convert between these different data types. So that's something um, we can do um, 
Q's really clever. It allows you to convert from one to the other. And it knows when you, you can do like think, simple things like addition as well. Um, it knows when you're applying, you know, seconds onto minutes. It means you're trying to add those time data types together. Um, so for example, if we take a quick look at the Jan 09 table again, and we say, pick up time is type P. Let's go check out what P is. P is a timestamp, which is a combination of a date and a time span. So we're gonna pick out different parts of that in our query. So first of all, we're pulling pick up time as is. Then we're gonna use dot notation here to um, select only the seconds. Then we're gonna select only in minute format. And then we're, this dot H here is hours. Sorry, let me just get to the end of the line here to give you, um, yes, now you can see that a bit better. Um, so if I run this here, um, you'll see that I get um, the pickup time as it was originally and then seconds, minutes, hours. I've actually just added in this where statement because everything's zero, so it's not that useful to see here. This one's a bit better. I'll just put a filter on where the pickup time actually has some values. Um, so you can see here, this is down to seconds, this is minutes, and this is hours. Um, I could also use a casting to get the minutes um, or the seconds um, or the hours. So if I take this here and instead of um, using dot notation, I would take out the minute, get rid of the dot, and I would use casting instead. So I can put the minute in front and then cast it to be pickup time. So we did see this earlier when we were casting to a time span. So you can see now I've got my pickup time um, also spinning out my minutes. Now, just to note, when you have this dot notation, your column will be called um, whatever you're dot notating by, um, whereas when you use casting, it's gonna infer the name of the column from the name of the column you're passing. Um, so because we already have a pickup time column, it's gonna call it pickup time one. Um, so just suffixing that with one at the end because it's duplicated, which we've seen already as well. Okay, so next thing we're gonna mention is order of evaluation. So order of evaluation in Q is always right to left. So what I mean by that is if we have something that looks like this, so if we say 100 times two and then plus five, um, you might think this will give you 205, um, but in actual fact, when we run it, we get 700 because the evaluation is right to left. So this is saying the first um, expression here, which is two plus five, gives me seven. And then the result of that is fed into this calculation, which would be 100 by seven. Um, and that's a really nice feature in Q. It means we don't need to have any order evaluation tables as a lookup anywhere. That actually improves performance because it's always gonna be right to left. Um, Q doesn't have to do any priorities um, or remembering any priorities or looking up on them either. Um, so that comes into play as well when we're doing our creation of columns within our QSQL statement. So for example, if I do this query here and I'm summing the fair plus the tip by the pickup time dot minutes, this is gonna pick out all my minutes. Um, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna um, add fair plus tip together and then I'm gonna run a sum, which is our aggregation across that combined result. So if we see what that looks like, you'll see I get this combined result for every single minute in the data set. Now, by comparison, in this example, um, this is saying sum of sum my fair, which is an aggregation, um, and then add on every single tip to that result. So what I actually end up getting is for every single minute bucket, I have a list of values um, because tip has not been aggregated, so it's still a list. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Um, you can obviously add brackets around things um, and if you don't want things to work in that right to left um, evaluation, um, this would be the exact same thing as adding this here. And um, you don't need the brackets because it's inferred from the order evaluation. If it helps you to add them, feel free to add them. It doesn't have an impact on performance. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, and the last thing we're gonna mention is just bucketing um, by time. So we can use this X bar keyword. So again, back to our reference card again. Um, over here, we've got X bar. You can go check that out. There's some really good examples there. Um, what X bar will allow us to do is basically bucket into um, time buckets. And it doesn't have to be time. That's the example we're using. But you could, for example, have something like three X bar. And we'll do one, two, three, four, five, nine, 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 20, for example. So if I run this, 
Um, what Q will do will basically round down to the nearest number. So if I run this, what I get is this. So I've got um, one, this list here on the right hand side, and it's basically rounding down every one of those values um, to the nearest lowest number. Um, and the bucket size is basically what's your parameter on the left here. So my bucket size is three. Um, so one and two are bucketed down to zero um, or rounded down to zero. And then um, three and four and five all sit within the next bucket. So that will go to the, um, that would be three. Um, and then eight will be rounded down to six. And then the nearest bucket to um, 20 is 18. Um, so we can use the exact same thing when we want to use this with time. We'll do 60 x bar and then we're using pickuptime.minute which is our list of minutes that we had above. Um, and in that way because um, 60 x bar minute that's going to give me 60 minutes or an hour. So if I run this statement which is doing count i by this that's basically going to bucket up my results by the hour which is really useful because obviously on their own when they're bucketed by minute um, or just yeah when we have the minute up here it's quite granular and um, I just want to see okay actually let's aggregate everything over a, a wider time frame and give me that result back um, which can be really useful when we've got a lot of, a lot of time series data as well okay um, so that's our x bar command um, there's a short exercise here exercise eight have a go with that um, and that brings us to the end of our QSQL module. Um, so I'll see you in our next module where we will be looking at table joins.